What's up Guardians, Profane here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we will be covering a complete and updated guide on the exotic trace rifle called Divinity and its associated exotic quest called Divine Fragmentation. We'll be breaking down all of the ins and outs of this exotic quest, including workarounds for some of the most common issues Guardians encounter when trying to acquire Divinity. If you end up enjoying today's video and finding it helpful, then please be sure to help support the channel below by hitting that like button along with the subscribe button if you're new. Both are greatly appreciated. For those wondering if the juice is still worth the squeeze when it comes to this exotic quest, Divinity remains to be an extremely unique and top tier trace rifle even after a number of adjustments to its performance. Divinity continues to be a necessary weapon against several raid, dungeon, and nightfall bosses thanks to its two intrinsic perks called Penance and Judgment. Sustained damage from Divinity creates a field around its targets which weakens and stuns them, making them more susceptible susceptible to damage from both you and your allies. Judgment also gives Divinity the ability to stun overload champions. Targets who are under the effects of Judgment for long enough will be struck with bursts of arc damage. So how do you get your own Divinity? Well, for starters, you will have to own the Shadowkeep DLC pack in order to acquire the Divine Fragmentation quest. It will also be in your best interest to have completed the Shadowkeep campaign, at least up until the point of having access to the lectern located in the sanctuary of the moon as this will become extremely important later on. Once you've unlocked access to the moon, you'll need to head to Sorrow's Harbor. Once landing, you'll want to head to the lunar battlegrounds. Once arriving in the Lunar Battlegrounds, you'll need to locate the narrow pathway hidden in the wall to the far left of where you entered. Follow this path until you reach a clearing with a large Vex portal straight ahead. You'll need to clear out the waves of fungus-ridden Vex until a large Vex Minotaur called Zedian, the Redemptive Mind, is summoned. Once you've defeated Zedian, he will drop a Vex Core, which is the Divine Fragmentation Quest, in the form of an exotic Ingram. Once you've picked up this Ingram, you'll find the Divine Fragmentation fragmentation quest has now been added to your quest log. This is a four-step quest with the first step requiring you to analyze this newly discovered Vex Core. This will need to be done in three separate lost sectors located on Nessus, the Conflux, the Array, and Ancient's Haunt. The order in which you complete these won't matter, but contained within each of the three lost sectors will be a small hidden room with an oracle that you'll need to interact with. When first interacting with the Oracle, an alarm will be triggered, which summons a small wave of Vex. Defeat these, and then re-engage with the Oracle. You'll receive 33% credit for each of the three Lost Sector Oracles. Once you've interacted with all three Oracles, you'll move on to the second step of Divine Fragmentation.
Once you've interacted with all three oracles, you'll move on to the second step of divine fragmentation, which requires you to decrypt the cores that you've received from the oracles. To do this, you'll need to gather 120 soul divisive parts, which are only found when defeating those fungus-ridden Vex, which means that currently there are only two efficient ways of doing this. Since the Vex offensive is no longer an option, and waiting for those Vex to invade the moon can take far too long, it will be best for you to head back to the Lunar Battlegrounds, where you first picked up the Divine Fragmentation quest. Clearing out these waves of Vex will reward you with around 60 to 70 divisive parts. Once you've cleared the adds, you can hop back on your Sparrow and head back the way you came until reaching the load zone for Sorrow's Harbor. Do a quick 180 and head right back to the Lunar Battlegrounds one last time to get the rest of the divisive parts off of those dirty, dirty Vex. And now you'll be on to the third step of Divine Fragmentation. This is where it will be necessary for you to have unlocked the lectern at the sanctuary. You'll need to visit the lectern and exchange 30 phantasmal fragments for an empowered decryption core. Phantasmal fragments can be obtained by defeating nightmares either in the Altar of Sorrows or in any law sector, and can also be earned by completing lectern bounties and nightmare hunt activities. Once you've exchanged your fragments for the empowered decryption core, your fun is truly about to begin. From this point on, the rest of the Divine Fragmentation quest will be completed while in the Garden of Salvation raid, and it will need to be done while on the same character that you have the Divine Fragmentation quest. You will need a bare minimum of five teammates to enter the Garden of Salvation raid with you, as you will be completing a series of hidden formation puzzles that will be completed in between the encounters of the raid. The first puzzle can be found after entering the Vex portal at the entrance of the Garden of Salvation raid. Once you've reached the Embrace within the Black Garden, you'll have a lengthy stairway ahead of you. On each side of the stairway is a hidden room. These rooms are mirrors of one another, so the entrance to one room can be found at the same point on the other side. You'll need to split your team into two, with three guardians going to the left room and three to the right room. Each of these rooms have three ledges, and you will need to position a guardian on each of the three ledges. Once in the correct positioning, the guardian facing the activation node in the left room will shoot it. This will create a beam from the node to the first guardian. The other five guardians will need to align themselves so that the beam can travel through all six guardians and into the final node in the right room. Once your team is in the correct positioning and the beam travels from the start to end nodes, you'll see flavor text on the bottom left of your screen that reads Accepted Singular Security Bypass. The first puzzle has been completed and your next Divine Fragmentation puzzle will be found after completing the first raid encounter against the Consecrated Mine. Once the encounter has been completed and you've looted the chest, you'll find that the entranceway to the second Divine Fragmentation puzzle can be located next to the Cherry Blossom Tree here on the top of the garden. After dropping down, you'll find yourself in a circular maze that is split into six rooms, revolving around the center zoned off conflux. Just as you did in the previous puzzle, you'll need to separate your team into two groups, with three guardians on each side. The first four positions are relatively easy to get to, with the final two requiring you to navigate across the drop-off and around to the other side of the zoned-off conflux.
once in the correct positioning, the Guardian at the first node will need to shoot it, which should create a full circular beam all the way through to the sixth Guardian at the final node, which will trigger the flavor text, Accepted Singular Security Bypass, confirming that this puzzle is complete. You'll find the next and third Divine Fragmentation puzzle located in the Undergrowth. After looting the hidden chest here in the Undergrowth, you can head back to the center where you drop down. Follow the branches along the right side of the room until you reach the tree with an upraised pod sticking straight up. Below this pod is the next puzzle note, and just as you did in the previous puzzles, you'll need to split your team up, but unlike the first two puzzles, this puzzle will require you to align your beams up to follow through these fixed points within these red prisms. Three members of the team will need to be positioned on the top branch. Two guardians will need to stand on the lily pad attached to the tree, and one guardian will need to stand on the lower branch, directly in front of the node. Once the first guardian shoots the node, the beam will cross to the two guardians on the lily pad, and then cross to the three guardians on the top branch. You'll likely need to tweak your alignments here to get each of the beams to cross through the fixed node prisms. It's important to not shoot the closed lily pad as it will block the beam, but once you've aligned everyone up, you'll have the same flavor text reading except singular security bypass third puzzle now complete and now you'll have to make your way up to the pavilion and complete the next three encounter phases against the consecrated mind before moving on to the fourth and fifth divine fragmentation puzzles once you've defeated the consecrated mind your next two puzzles will be found here in the pavilion the first is rather simple and only requires five guardians you'll need to position your team to where the beam will circle from and back to the center pillar cross through each of the prisms as it goes. You'll need to have one guardian crouching on the outer pillar, just as I am in the video, for the beam to properly complete its circuit. And once done, just as before, you'll have the flavor text that reads, Accepted, Singular Security Bypass. Now, on to the fifth puzzle, which is located here at the pavilion. You'll find the starting node on a nearby ledge off from the center. Unlike any of the previous puzzles, this puzzle will require you to activate and then share the beam between your team and then navigate navigate away to transfer the beam to another node. So to start, you'll need to have all guardians stand in a straight line. Activate the node and the beam will connect to all six of you. Now you will need to walk together without breaking the chain to get to the other side of the pathway with rotating platforms. There's two ways you can do this. You can play it safe by taking the long way down the left side path, or you can time your jumps accordingly and have your whole team jump across the rotating platforms to all land safely right in front of the prisms, which you'll need to align yourselves to once again. Whichever path you take, you'll need all six guardians at the end to link up and pass through the prisms in the proper formation, just as you did in the previous puzzles. Once you've gotten it aligned, you'll see the flavor text once more read off accepted singular security bypass. You'll now be ready to traverse through the jumping puzzle section of this raid before getting to the final two divine fragmentation puzzles, which will both be located under the waterfall before getting to the final hidden chest and the final boss. Once you've made it to the bottom of the waterfall, look for the tiny path that leads into a small cave. At the center of this cave is another divine fragmentation node. To complete the sixth puzzle, you'll need to activate the node and then stretch the laser beam from this center to the ending node, which is located on a hanging ledge above the cave's entrance. You'll need each guardian to stretch as far as they can to get this beam to go all the way through. Once successful, you'll have the flavor text that reads, 
accepted singular security bypass, leaving you with one final puzzle to go, which will be completed here at this node. This is the most complicated of all of the puzzles, as it will require you to replicate patterns created by the nodes. Before starting this puzzle, you'll notice that there are six plates that have appeared on the floor in between the two tether nodes. When the sequence begins, the tether nodes will create a pattern along these six plates that you and your team will need to replicate. First, you will need to tether yourselves just as you did before. Stand in a line and have the first guardian shoot the tether node. This will cast the beam through all six guardians. And now you'll be ready to begin the sequence. There will be seven total patterns that you will need to replicate. The nodes will show you the required patterns before each sequence begins, but you will have very little time to get your assigned plate. So because of this, it's best to assign everyone numbers, one through six. Guardians assigned with number one will always stand on the first plate cast from the first tether node. This will also be the guardian that will shoot the node to start the puzzle. Guardians assigned number six will always stand on the last plate that connects to the end node. These two positions will be best suited for guardians who are struggling with coordination, which leaves everyone else tending to the second, third, fourth, and fifth plates. Guardians assigned to two will play off of number one and stand on the next plate in the sequence. Guardians assigned five will play off of six, standing on the plate before four six in the sequence and then the same for three and four respectfully when you've completed the sequence correctly you will hear an upbeat chime and the next sequence will appear if you fail at any point you will hear a downbeat chime and the plates will deactivate since this is contingent on each guardian getting to and standing on their assigned plate in just a matter of seconds it will likely take you and your team a couple of tries to get this one right once you've gone through seven sequences you'll see the flavor text appear as complete all security bypassed, meaning that you have completed each of the seven divine fragmentation puzzles. But your journey is sadly not over. Before you can claim your sweet new exotic, you'll have to defeat the Sanctified Mind, the final boss of the Garden of Salvation, and loot the secondary chest that's available at the end. And you'll have to do all of this in the same run as well. Even if you have completed all of the puzzles, if your team leaves to orbit at any point before defeating the Sanctified Mind, your progress will be reset, meaning that you'd have to go back and redo the entire raid and all of the puzzles again. While it is a hefty challenge to complete, the divinity is well worth the time and investment. But beware, with great power comes great responsibility. Don't be surprised when the burden of Div Bitch rests on your shoulders, once becoming an owner of this magnificent exotic trace rifle. And with that, we've come to an end of today's video on how to get the divinity in 2022. If you continue to have any issues or roadblocks with completing your quest and be sure to let me know in the comments below if you've already got the divinity and have some extra tips and tricks to make things even easier for your fellow guardians then leave those in the comments as well thank you as always for checking out today's video if you enjoyed and found it helpful then please be sure to help support the channel below by hitting that like button along with the subscribe button if you're new both are greatly appreciated and both really do help support the channel if you find yourself in need of help throughout this season maybe with a raid a dungeon nightfall or any other new content then be sure to check out the discord link in the description below and join one of the greatest communities in all of destiny and until next time guardians this has been profane wishing you all some happy hunting